of Saint Utian. I think he's staying here for the night to save on the cost of lodging. Yuan, go to the guest house and reserve a room first. I'll wait till he wakes up, then we'll go there. Yes, sir. Hey, Wu Chang. Wu Chang. Send Wu Chang. Oh, Brother Fu Zhang. Brother, I didn't expect to run into you. I'm glad to see you. Come. Let's stay at the guest house. No, wait. I'll stay here. I have to catch the train first thing tomorrow morning. I might miss it. Don't worry. The guest house is quite close. You won't miss it. We'll stay in the same room so we can talk a bit. Come on. Tell you what. Let's talk here. Come on. We'll sit there and talk. All right? Over Let's here. Let's go. Excuse us, please. Sit here, brother. <laughs> Utiao. What are you doing here? Uh, doing a little business. <laughs> <laughs> business for whom? For the collective or for yourself? For myself, actually. If you're out here, who's working on the land at home then? My wife's working on the land. That's why I'm out here doing business. The new policy nowadays is urging us to go into business. <laughs> what kind of business, huh? Uh, this and that. Very well. I won't ask, since you don't want to tell me. But let me remind you, don't get involved in illegal business. Don't worry, I won't. Brother Fuja, hmm? are you going on an official trip somewhere? Not an official trip. I've returned to Wanxi to bring Xiao Xia back for burial. Unfortunately, we never found Xiao Xia's body. Her mother really misses her. So I burned a few of Xiao Xia's clothing that she likes to wear when she was alive and brought it back for burial. That way, her mother would have a place to mourn and to express her grief. All of us at home heard about Xiao Xia's death. Shosha was a kind and good girl. Brother Fuja, please take it easy. Let's not talk about it. How's everything at home? My brother and Shawan, how are they now? They're good. Very good. A lot better than me. What do you mean? Uh -huh. Brother Fuja, mm -hmm. in the past, you know that sort of status I enjoyed? I used to always stand in front of others. My work was always considered advanced. For Shuangshui Village, I've earned certificates of merit in silk banners. No brigade, no people's commune, nor county leader would fail to acknowledge Sen Utian. Back in those days, I was always someone who would sit on the stage. But now, sadly, now I'm just like a beggar. I've fallen to this state. I didn't know but in the past, when I'd pass a place like this on the way to a meeting, I'd be treated like an honored guest and would stay at hotels with a bathhouse. But these days, I sleep on the floor of the waiting lounge. I'm even worse than a dog. Secretary, uh, hmm? the room has been reserved, and so is dinner. Oh. Uh, how many peasants like Utian are there, who are away from home, at loose ends and feel lost, and need guidance? There are many, sir. Call the Huang Yuan Party Committee. Tell them that I will meet with them tomorrow morning to study how we can settle these peasants. What about your daughter's affairs? We need to resolve the peasants' affairs first. Have them properly settled, so they won't be in the state at loose ends at a train station. Brother Fuja, a senior cadre like you set aside an important family affair for the sake of a lowly peasant at a train station. Thank you so much. You really are a good party cadre. All right. Come to the guest house. Sleep there for the night. Leave early tomorrow, all right? Gladly. Let's go. During this time, Xiaoping also did all he could to extract himself from his earlier depression. He tried his best to bury his pain and sorrow in his busy and formidable labor and endeavor. He immersed himself completely in the stress of this present toil, the pain and frustration of every struggle, and the joy of small successes. Yes, whenever he, alone, led this group of men to the firing line, like a man poised to fight, 
he could indeed forget everything, even the saddest moment in his life. I just returned from the mine. I listened to their statistical report. Do you know the rank of your team in terms of coal output rate? I don't know. I never asked. <laughs> Bloody hell! You came in first again! <laughs> Here you go. Have a cigarette. Here. Not smoking? Take it anyway. Oh, my dear boy. You just don't know how to compete. But your mind, it's full of interesting ideas. You can be an official, you know. <laughs> but sir. Yes? You're wrong about that. The way I see it, as a team leader, I'm just like a brigade leader. I'm no government official. I'm at most a first-class private and have to similarly charge forward at the most intense front line. I must take the lead in enduring hardship and sacrifice. <laughs> You're teaching me a lesson too, aren't you? Huh? You're a good lad, son. You brought me honor. <laughs> Sit down. I ask you to come here to tell you something. You've been rated by the Changchang Mining Bureau as a model young pace setter. This is a good thing, okay? You need to go to Changchang for the awarding ceremony. Please get ready. Good thing I have to buy stuff in the city. Thank you, sir. <laughs> come back soon, okay? I will. Congratulations. Thank you. His delight is not fully accredited to this honor. Rather, it's because he felt his labor and sweat has been recognized and respected. What he values is a laborer's dignity and his sense of pride. There is nothing worth bragging about in this world except a person's labor and his creation. Hello, comrade. How can I May help? I see those two bags? Oh, these two? Yes, please. Here you go. Thank you. Both are selling quite well. This is more expensive. The color conceals dirt better. Ah. I'll take this then. All right. Can you get me a box of crayons as well, please? A box of crayons? And that small copper bell. Wrap them all together, okay? Sure. Buying a cassette tape? Yes. Do you want it? Yes. I want this. Beethoven's Pastoral Symphony. Okay. I told you, Ming Ming, I can't go. What's the matter? Why are you crying? Huh? Come here, Ming Ming. Hmm? What's wrong? You can tell me. He said huh? there's a sports meet this afternoon. Parents of the other children will be there to cheer them on. He's been asking me to go, but I have to work this afternoon. Can't you skip work today, Ma? The other children and people to cheer them on, not me. I'll be all alone. <sighs> Okay, okay, that's enough. Let's not cry anymore. Come here, Ming Ming. Come and see what I brought for you from the city. I'm sure you're going to like it. Yes! Here. Look. Nice, huh? Bag? So, do you like it? <laughs> now, see what's inside this cool bag. Quick, look inside. Crayons! Yes. My favorite crayons! I know it's your favorite, but there's more. I have here something else. What's this, Ming Ming? Huh? It's a small bell. You're right. It's a small bell for Blackie. <laughs> You're spoiling him again. That child is spoiled enough as it is. You're talking bad about me again. Well, you should learn from other children, son. They're more sensible and obedient, unlike you. You should learn from Uncle Xiaoping too, Ma. Because Uncle Xiaoping is kind and nice to me, unlike you. <laughs> hey, Ming Ming. Are you? Talking back to your mother now, are you? No, talking back. Go on, tie the smell belt on Blackie. Run along. Sister, ask for the sports meet. I'll just go with him. No, you won't. What would people think? The parents of the other children will be there. I'll just cheer for Ming Ming. Why can't I do that? Don't worry, I'll go. All right? Ming Ming, how is it? 
Have you tied the small bell on him yet? Let me see. Are you being naughty, Blackie? Let Uncle Shopping do it. Stay still. Ah, it fits nicely. <laughs> you lost to me last time. Don't even think about beating me this time. What makes you say that? My father is here to cheer me on. You don't have a father. That's crap. Father! You can do it! On your marks! Go! 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 Tray, ready for serving! Okay, I'm on my okay, way! Okay, hurry! I'm coming! Don't load it anymore, it's full! Okay. Hey, Fatty, I load those steamed ones! Right! <laughs> oh, Shawan, there you are! Shawan! <laughs> I really can't believe it! Who would have thought that Wamang Yao would be working in the kitchen so energetically? Other than tending the fire and cutting vegetables? Look, he's even learned how to steam buns! But are these team buns properly done? Try one. Now? Yes. How is it? It's good. <gasps> you know what, An Fang Ying? I can't recall when we stopped being hungry. Do you still remember those days? <sighs> we started from black steamed buns to yellow steamed buns to this, white steamed buns. Oh, I remember. Now every household in the village is building new cave houses. Everyone is just like you, striving hard. <laughs> Show on! Show on! What's uh, up? I don't know if this is a good thing or a oh, bad thing. Oh, it's probably a bad thing. Last time you said that, my wife wouldn't let me sleep on the bed. This guy got me into trouble with <laughs> you. You're really Yen. so funny. What is it? Apparently, a guy by the name of Ha Yong Ha is here to see you. Hu Yong Ha? Uh huh. Show on. We peasants can't just be satisfied with running a small factory. We should embark on bigger things. Although government policies have now eased for us, in reality, country bumpkin peasants, just like you and I, don't have much social status. When you've made money up to a certain level, it doesn't make life interesting anymore. I'm so sorry, young ha. Huh? You've been rattling on quite a bit. But what exactly are you trying to tell me? We should become famous, do bigger things. So peasants like you and me will be recognized throughout China. You want to make peasants famous? Yes. We should also take part in cultural affairs. Cultural affairs? Can peasants like us have an influence on such matters? <laughs> I met a director from the provincial TV station. Who? A director. Uh, I think his last name is Mao or something. I invited him to dinner and we became friends. We've come to an agreement that I would take the lead in looking for farmers turned entrepreneurs to invest in the production of romance of the Three Kingdoms. It'll star Liu Bei, Guan Gong, Shang Fei, Lu Shizhan, and Cao Cao. What role will they give us? We're not acting, we're producing. If you're willing to be a shareholder. <laughs> a shareholder with my bit of money? It's all right. The money will come from me mainly, but you can give your share <laughs> and you'll be able to see your name on TV. That way the whole of China will know you. So if you'll agree, I'll bring you to the provincial TV station to meet the director. What do you think? Where the coal mine is? Yes, that's it. My younger brother Xiao Bing is there. I can go visit him. I'll go with you. Let's go then. I'll tell the driver to start the car. We can leave now. Let's go. It's a good day to work, comrade. As coal miners, you must hold your head up high. You are the pillars of this great country. This is hilarious, Xiao Ping. What? The water in your bathhouse really does smell like coal, doesn't it? We wash like this every day, so I'm used to it. Brother, this business deal of yours, it sounds okay. <laughs> but I feel that spending money on such vanity is unnecessary. You're going to invest your hard-earned money on what? A TV drama? A series entitled Romance of the Three Kingdoms? I don't want to be mean. But if you invest in this, it'll be too much for you. At the very least, I think it's an act of ignorance. Why is that? Huh? Don't you approve of what I plan to do? Brother, I think being successful over the last few years has certainly shattered your inner peace. Y 
you've already done more than your fair share for the family. Oh, you wrote to say that you've built a house for our father. My guess is that, based on the lavish design, the money I've sent won't be enough to build it. You must have spent more than twice the money I've sent, right? I've also heard that you've managed to get brother-in-law working at a brick hill recently. That's right. Brother, there are some things only you can do better than most people. Don't say that. Actually, when I first heard about filming this TV series, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, I thought it was a novel idea. But mainly, it's just to give a bit of face to Hu Yang Ha, since he's the main investor. And on top of that, even if I lose money in the TV series, I will just be losing a bit of money. If society wasn't so well off, I wouldn't have made so much money in the first place, <laughs> so I figured I ought to lose What a you're bit. thinking is absolutely correct. We must live comfortably if we can, and have meaningful lives. But you can't just throw your money around indiscriminately. Come on. What do you mean indiscriminately? What if instead of losing money, I make money? Isn't that better? Make money? Right. You're thinking of making money when you don't know anything about the TV business? Instead of investing for the production of a TV series, do something useful for our Shuang Shui village. Think about it. Shawan, why have you brought me here? <laughs> do you come here often? I don't. Oh, look at the mess in this courtyard. Back then, I said time and again, I wanted to help Shuang Shui village, so I've asked you to come take a look. I want to speak with you about something important. Hold on, Shawan. Are you going to ask me to move again? You'll let me see the sunrise from the west again, aren't you? <laughs> Don't even mention that to me again. Don't mention it, please. I feel so ashamed every time you mention it. What's to be ashamed about? Nobody dared to do it. But you, Shawan, did it. This important thing I want to discuss with you, you have to do it. I won't take no for an answer. What is it? <sighs> Help me get this basketball hoop up first. Lift. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I'm prosperous now. And most of the problems at home have been resolved. That's enough. It's time to rebuild the school. Rebuild the school? That's right. Let's rebuild the school. So the children of the village can say goodbye to the temporary classroom at the breeding shed. We need to give our children a better school environment. That's an important thing. Yes. I agree with you, Shawan. I'm 100% behind you. <laughs> but I heard you had other plans. You're going to invest your money into producing a TV series? <laughs> oh, please, Chuen Wu, let's not talk about that. You know what Xiao Ping told me? He said, brother, you are thinking of making money when you don't know anything about the TV business. Instead of doing a TV drama series, do something useful for our village. Hmm. I think he's right. Hmm. Chuang Shui is the world I live in. This is the only place where I, Sun Shao Wan, have experienced all the suffering all the happiness, humiliation, and glory. I faced and lived through them all. My world is not outside this village. My world is here! All right, Joe. I'll get to work at once. You're right. Chuang Shui Village is my world That's too. That's right, Wu. Exactly. After rebuilding, if there's any left over from the 20,000 yuan, mm. we can set up a scholarship fund for the children. If some of them make it to high school or university, we can subsidize part of their school fees. Wow. Sure. That is a great idea. The children will be happy. These walls only have a few cracks in them. When they're demolished, we can reuse the stones and save on costs. The crucial thing is to find the kids a good elementary school English language teacher. Mm. Peasant children can get into universities because they lose out on foreign language. If a good teacher is found, it's gonna be okay. Oh, okay what? Okay means it's acceptable. Oh, 
That's good, that's good. If our children can learn English while they're still young, then the probability of going further in their studies will be a lot You're higher. You're right. It will be a very big okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Twin Wu, look, watch me. School has begun! <laughs> School has begun! <laughs> Here I go again! School has begun! Is it that serious, Doctor? Hmm. Please inform your family members to come. Then we'll discuss the details. I came alone precisely because I didn't want them to know the details. Uh, Doctor? What are the chances of a full recovery? Well... You'd better ask your family to come. The sooner the better. I will. Shaolian is at a loss right now. She didn't know how to begin to tell the people at home about her illness, especially to her dear Xiaowan. She's not upset about getting such an illness because she's finally able to enjoy life. Rather, she's heartbroken because she wouldn't be able to walk towards a happy future with Xiaowan. Every time I sit here, I recall so many things in my life. Things from when I was a kid up to the present time. Life is like a large wagon, and I've been driving this wagon in this corner of the Low West for half of my life. In the second half of your life, you will drive this wagon and continue to spend it in this corner of the Low West. I have more courage and I'm different now. All I used to think about was how we won't starve to death. Now I can think of using the money I have to do a little something for the village. And at the thought of this, <laughs> I feel pretty fantastic. <laughs> Julianne, you're cuffing again? Have you taken your cuff medicine? You don't sound good. Hey. No, I'm all right. With you around, it's better than cough medicine. <laughs> you look pale. Are you cold? No, I'm not. Really, I'm all right. Shulian? What is it? I must admit, it has taken its toll on you. All the hardships that you have endured. Listen, next year, when the days turn warm, whether you like it or not, I'll bring you to the provincial capital for a medical exam. Let's see. Be honest with me. Tell me, how do you feel physically? I told you I'm all right. We've been receiving one good news after another, and I'm waiting for you to take the world by storm, so how can I let anything happen to me? That's it. That's the spirit. <sighs> Nothing must happen to you, all right? You must watch me. Watch how I act. Like you used to. <sighs> we'll take the world by storm again and make our lives prosper all the more. All right? <laughs> when that time comes, both of us will leap energetically onto that wagon of new life. We'll sit together on the shafts, and we'll shout, we love our lives. We love it! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> so nothing must happen to you? Nothing will happen, nothing. <laughs> We still have to keep going. You must move forward. Sister Shoyan, uh, Brother Shawan. Runya? Here, take this. You didn't have to, you're too kind. It's for the children. Shoyan, <laughs> did you ask Runya to come? I did. Ah. Oh. Runya, have some water. 
Right, I'm making chili noodles here. You should have dinner with us, Runya. Oh, all right. Make a couple more dishes. Sure. Runya loves fried eggs. I'll fry some for her. Add several more eggs, then. I'll give her eight. Would that be enough for you, Runya? Do you want to stuff me to death? <laughs> your cave house is quite nice. You even have your own TV. I feel a bit sad. Shawan didn't get to marry you because he was poor back then. But life is good now. The brick factory has been contracted and we have this cave house. If you and Shawan were to marry now, wouldn't that be nice? Sholian, what are you talking about? Stop it. Clear? I think the two of you are compatible. Is that what you really think? Knock it off. What are you doing? What are you saying? It's true, Shawan. If only you had married Runya, you wouldn't endure a life of poverty. You never thought you'd benefit from the policies of the party. It'd be like a dream. It never crossed my mind, Shulian. What is with you today? I know you feel responsible for me. I don't want you to carry that burden. Shawan, I want you to choose again. It doesn't matter if life is good or not. Choose wisely. It's called... Getting a second chance in life. What nonsense is this? The Lowest Plateau is still so beautiful. Actually... The reason I came was not because Sholian asked me to. Shengxian asked me to come too. They both said the same thing. They wanted to give me a chance to choose. Shengxian said that? He did. I gave birth to a boy last year. Yes, I heard. His name is Lil Lao, right? Actually, it's Lila. Frankly speaking, after I gave birth to my son, I finally understood what it means to live, and what life is all about. That's right. Other than love, people have to learn to live, too. Wait. Did you say that... Sheng Xian gave you the option to choose again? That day, I didn't have any rain gear with me. Because when I left home, there was no sign of rain, even though the sky was overcast. I wanted to change out of my wet and dirty shoes. But I couldn't find the pair of old shoes I hid under our bed. It wasn't just that pair of old shoes. My other shoes, and many of Shang Xian's shoes, all of them were missing. I was wondering, maybe someone had stolen our shoes? But why would those thieves steal old shoes? In any case, Shang Xian has been home all day. So how could a thief possibly enter the house? Wear your rubber shoes instead. Your old shoes. I'm not done fixing your shoes yet. But... Uh, you, you didn't have to fix them. I'm learning to be a cobbler. I'll get a business license after acquiring the skills, then earn a living as a cobbler. Runya, how can a father who can't provide for his own child have the courage to face his child, or even live on this earth? Runya, you and my parents don't want me to do this. Because of your status. A cobbler working on the street would embarrass you. But I want to be self-reliant. Only my hands are nimble now. I'll still support you. Shengxian, I am here for you. Manual labor 
can still make a person live with dignity. I know that for you, working as a cobbler is not just a means of livelihood. It's also the essence of life. Listen, please. Don't worry. I'll go and talk to your parents. All right, come on. Show me what you've done. I want to see what my old shoes look like. If you had arrived ten minutes later, they would have been fixed already. Come on. <laughs> I wasn't laughing at his look of embarrassment. I was truly happy. Those hands that had been honed by the steering wheel over a long period of time were still so adroit and full of vitality. I could proudly say that he was now an outstanding cobbler. He could finish mending those shoes Bring in it. less than 10 minutes. See if they fit. <sighs> Allow me. It's good. They're good as new. They fit well. I handled the formalities of getting a business license for Shengxian. Shengxian made various preparations at home. I also went to buy him a parcel of land for his business and a custom-made steel frame for the signage according to the city requirements. In the morning, Shengxian would go to work fixing shoes. At night, I would go meet him at his shop and then we'd go home together. I often left his tools for repairing shoes at the food stall across his shop. He said what happened in the past was unfair to both of us. And it was because he lost his leg, that out of kindness and pity, I decided to be with him. Now that he's come into his own, and he can take care of himself, he gave me the option to choose. It's exactly how Sholian said. I guess... I'm getting a second chance. A second chance at life. <laughs> getting a second chance in life. How does one do that? Look at these shoes I'm wearing. He fixed these. Oh? I think they fit really well now. Then that's a good thing, right? So why did you leave Sheng Xian behind? <laughs> I just wanted to scare him a little. <laughs> and also... I wanted to visit you, brother. Perhaps he's somewhere regretting what he said to me. Sholian must be too. I bet you feel sorry now. <sighs> so she gave you the option to choose again. What do you choose? Yes, she wants me to choose again. You know what? All these years, Sholian has been by my side. Running things in and out of our home. We never sat down properly to chat like this. Maybe we should, though. But I've come to realize that, as long as she's by my side, I feel secure and confident. Past affections are like teeth. When it's gone, it's gone. They will never grow back. Even those fitted are fake. <sighs> Runya, there's hope when you can come into your own. I'm going home. Go home then, Shawan. <laughs> Thank you.
after Qian Fuzha returned to Huang Yuan to take up his post as prefectural secretary, Huangbei Bridge collapsed. This was a thorny incident with a multitude of legacy issues and problems arising from current conditions, but he continued to rise to the challenge. This is unacceptable. Wang Yuan's Huangbei Bridge was just completed last year. Someone has to be accountable for its collapse. This shouldn't have happened. Rescue operations are currently underway. I need a report from each department. Secretary Tian, it's an honor that Commissioner Gao... That's enough! Save the key points! Our Urban Development Bureau has reviewed the survey results of the departments involved. The root cause of the collapse of Wang Yuan's Wangbei Bridge is not natural, but man-made. It's the result of cutting corners. So we must thoroughly investigate to find out who's accountable, and fast! Of these, I'm sure. Problems existed in many departments during the construction of Huangbei Bridge. Construction, supervision, acceptance, and handover. Even the final operation department. If any of those departments had been responsible, such a serious collapse would not have happened. The Public Secretary Bureau arrested contractor Hu Yonghe and is now interrogating him. Our commission is investigating the people who took part in the building of the bridge. The Bureau of Health has made arrangements with all the major hospitals to free up beds to provide emergency assistance to the people injured. Civil Affairs Bureau has already pacified the families of the deceased and the injured. I only have one thing to say. All departments must work together so we can all do our job. That's right. While carrying out post-disaster work, the Department for Discipline must carefully investigate this incident. Implicate whoever it is. Do not hesitate. Zero tolerance. We must give an account to the people of Huang Yuan and a satisfactory answer to the victims' families. Get to work. Chiquan, stay for a while. Chiquan, Secretary Chiang is fuming mad. Be careful. Don't make him more furious, all right? Secretary Chiang, what are your instructions? What did he say to you? Commissioner Gao reminded me not to make you angry. What does the commissioner mean by that? Is the collapse of Huangbei Bridge solely my problem? The state has spent so much money to build a bridge for Huang Yuan, and it collapsed after half a year? Officials like us should feel that. We've let the Huang Yuan people down? Whatever the case may be, once the commission gets busy, it's bound to be a bad thing. After the bridge collapsed, we've already found that serious problems exist among the leading cadres. Are you hinting at something? Does this have something to do with Commissioner Gao? Well... If that's the case, I'll talk to him myself. Secretary Chen, the work of the Department for Discipline is unique. It's under the party leadership, but it also supervises every member, including yourself. Whatever needs to be reported, I will report it to you. Like you shouldn't ask too many questions, so that people won't have a hold on you. Shikwan, are you trying to say that someone close to me is involved? In the Huang Yuan Swang Bay bridge collapse? Is that it? Huh? If that is really the case, then you must adhere to principles. Secretary Tian. All these years, letters of complaint against you have never stopped coming. From central leaders, provincial leaders, the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, the Central Organization Department, the Provincial Party Commission. If I hadn't adhered to principles, you can't devote yourself to carrying out reforms. When someone wants to do something, there will always be opposition. 
I can't stop doing things just because they complain against me. Shikwan, let me remind you. When investigating the party responsible for the bridge collapse, um, you must be quick. You must not give them any chance to breathe. We must allow the souls of those who have died to find peace and give an account to the victims' families. All right. I'll move quickly. Based on Fang Shiguan's advice and his hesitant and secretive attitude, Tian Fuzhao felt something ominous veiled underneath the recesses of this incident.